Uh, yeah, okay. So if you can't hear me, then let me know straight away because it's always slightly embarrassing when I've sort of spoken for at least two minutes and realised no one can hear me, which happened the other day <laughs> <laughs> while I was talking to a bunch of Australians. Uh, yeah, uh, so don't be shy. If you can't hear, just say, Roger, you've gone. And, uh, and I'll retract. All right, so I've been, I've been trying to think a little bit about how all this is working out. And if you haven't sussed out, by the way, like everything's sort of, with, even with the best laid intentions, everything's still sort of got a slight make it up as you go along sort of point, point of uh, sort of way of doing things, which is sort of inevitable anyway. <laughs> um, there's never a, a plan that follows the plan. Uh, but there is a plan, and the plan is that um, you're doing the Heading for Extinction talk, and then you're going to have these first chapter meetings, and then there's going to be a, a sort of moment of truth sort of session, which is called Welcome to the Rebellion. And we are sort of got this idea that we're going to role play uh, on Sunday afternoons what you sort of say to people. Okay, so that sounds like okay. Um, I've got a few things to say about it. Um, so I'm going to talk for a little bit because I've been trying to find my rhythm a little bit with this and maybe you have as well. You know, what's useful, what's not useful. Do you, you guys want to hear me rambling on sort of thing or don't you, you know? <laughs> so no one's privately emailed me to say, that's crap, Roger, shut up. We'll go on with the job. So um, I'm sort of like going, okay, so they seem to be reasonably pleasant to me so far, so let's carry on. But what the main thing, the main, my, my main sales pitch here is I'm a, I'm a great believer in role playing because you can just like, you can just waffle on and read stuff. But until someone's, you're sitting on a Zoom call and someone said, right, explain the structure of XR. You know, it's like, <clears throat> and once you've done it, then you sort of feel you're on your way you haven't got that block and um so that's what we're going to do so you know once we get into a bit of rhythm that's what we're going to do at 10 past the hour we're going to be role playing and what what i did for about 10 years was a facilitation workshop and i trained thousands of people in facilitation for my sins and it was just all role play and it was all great fun because everyone used to think oh facilitation sounds really technical but i just got we'll do it you might have seen the video it's great fun because you get people trying to shut other people up. And one of the ways we always do it is, is we just rotate around the group. So there's no getting out of it. So I've got this sort of screen here. So I'm going to start off with Jamie and then go to Gene, uh, G, G, Do. Yeah, I think I got that right. Donald, Jay, like, you know what I mean? It's going to come round. So you're going to be in the hot seat sooner or later. So none of that sort of let's stay quiet and hope Roger doesn't notice me routine that a few of you sort of do. Okay, so that's what the plan is. And obviously, if that's not your cup of tea, hopefully, you, well, you don't need to come, I suppose. Or at least you can tell me it doesn't work and you just want to read the text and get on with it. All right, so that's, the first, that's what I'm sort of thinking of doing. I'm in a little bit of a conundry about it because uh, Tatiana has done... By the way, if you don't pronounce your name properly, even though I pronounced, I pronounced it right for about four weeks, that's because I've got a slight brain defect. I've just saw my kids for the first time in eight weeks. Uh, this morning and I, I forget their names which is it is highly embarrassing so I just go around in a circle until I get to the right one with the right name I don't know but anyway so my apologies I've got a slight dyslexic thing going on anyway that's just a little aside in case you want to get uh, want to be offended or something but right, because I can't remember your name all right so anyway the point I'm trying to make here yeah the point I'm, I'm having a little conundrum one is part of me thinks it what we do the role plays around should come from you, okay? So, you know, you're trundling through the week and you get into a bit of a panic about something. So, oh my God, I don't know how to answer that question. You know, how does, you know, early Marxism relate to dilemma actions in the 1950s, right? You know, it's like, I oh, better ask Roger that one. So you could, so you could basically, we could do it like a surgery where one of you says, I'm having a real problem with this. I don't know what to say and then we'll role play it so it can come to you. So that's the bottom up sort of way. So part of me thinks that would be cool. But then as I said, Tatiana has sort of sorted out this idea that we're going through 
all these trainings, which are like the holy grail script of XR sort of thing, you know, where, you know, we've got these four, four or five stages before everyone's totally sorted out and ready to march into Washington or whatever. And, and we're just going to get that off. And I agree, like, it's sort of like the, it's like these, this is the super basics, isn't it? So on balance, we're going to do uh, Tatiana's thing, right? Which isn't Tatiana's thing, it's just her interpreting my thing. But, but we, we can review it. I sort of think maybe we should just do this so that it's a bit like learning a 10 times table. I'm doing this with my eight year old. It's like, you've just got to learn it. You know, that's it before you can do any other maps. And it's a bit like you've just got to learn this stuff. It's like the basics. And then once you've got it, of course, you can really off in your sleep and you can relax. And then you can go on to higher philosophical questions if you want or something. But I'm sort of aware as well that you're probably in some sort of agitation personally and socially because of all this stuff going on in America. And I've got to admit, I've been feeling a little bit embarrassed about it because I'm thinking, oh my God, you guys have got all this on your plate. And you've got this weird English guy coming along going, you know, this is the plan and you know, you're living it and what do I know and what have you. So I feel a little bit like it was with COVID. So the first two or three weeks of COVID, I had that sort of feeling of going, this is all pretty relevant because loads of people are dying. And you know, what, what, but then, but then there was a little bit of a flip point and me and Dolly suddenly sort of sussed out that this was actually, we could play this to our advantage without sounding too sort of manipulative. But it's more like, like COVID sort of is this massive emotional upset thing. So let's use that in order to direct us to what the point of life is and what the point of being a good person is and what the point of life is in the climate emergency. In other words, you bring it, that heightened existential emotional reality is, is good, right? Because the real enemy here is indifference, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, everything's fine, you know, there's still food in the supermarket, you, do, you know. So I had this little revelation this morning of just thinking, all oh, right, that's great, there's all this sort of stuff going on in America because, you know, from an analytical point of view, uh, because, you know, people are talking about shit, right? They're actually talking about what the hell's happening in America, you know, where's it going? you know and there's five million people in america going so what's the plan <laughs> you know because you usually on social uprisings everyone gets sort of excited and after about two weeks they start going so you know what's what's going you know what is the plan and that question what is the plan is the starting point to the extinction rebellion proposition if you see what i mean and that's great so maybe there's some way in which when you're having these sessions with people, whether it's the Heading for Extinction talk or the first chapter meeting or the uh, whatever, you can split people up, first of all, just so people can emote about what the fuck's going on in America. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't really matter what they say about it. It's more like, let's just ground ourselves in this everyday reality of all this, you know, fuckery that's going on and, you know, all these competing emotions and intellectual ideas. Uh, and, and, and just getting that out just enables everyone to sort of settle into it rather than just pretending it's not there, if you see what I mean. So what I'm thinking about this, like, welcome to rebellion, basically, like, this is the Bible session, you know, it's a bit, I don't know, do the evangelicals do this? They sort of scoop people off the, the street and then they give them the soup, don't they? And then you've got to hear the sermon. So it's a bit like you scoop them off the street with heading for extinction talk. And now the welcome to rebellion is the Bible bit where you've just got to summarize, you know, the whole Old Testament in two hours. And basically we're all done for and you've got to give your life to God and give us loads of money. You know, that's the general gist as I understand it. So, the, so what, what, um, what, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little summary of how it all fits together. And I think people will be open to this summary because everyone's thinking about this subject. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then we'll fairly rapidly go through, very superficially, we'll go through the three areas which are in this introduction which is story, structure, and uh, 
story strategy and structure i'm not sure that's the right right like it definitely starts off with story so you think this is all a little bit like colonial sort of english stuff it actually comes from america so <laughs> so the guy the guy who i want to talk to you is um is uh, paul engler by the way he's the, i'm very honored to say he's a mate of mine now and um uh, he's the He's the godfather of American uprising theory. <laughs> so no doubt he's not getting much sleep at the moment. But I want to get him in to talk to you guys, just so you don't think that this Roger Hallam guy's just all talking bollocks or something. Because basically I'm just following him really with a few add-ons. Um, all right, so, so I'm going to give this little spiel and then I'm gonna ask one of you to summarize it for me. Um, I'm going to say Jamie because she's next to me on the sc screen so she can be prepared and and then one of you will do what I want to do is one of you will do the story some aspects of the story so that'll be Gido and and then I'll go to Donald and then Donald can add to it and then we're going to uh, LJ and so on okay um, and we'll do so the idea isn't that we do a comprehensive thing here we're not going to, we don't really have time. And, you know, maybe we'll come back to it next week, possibly. Maybe we should, uh, Tatiana, because it's quite a big session. And also, I've had a look at the blurb, and it's still a little bit fuzzy how we actually fill these four hours up. So I'm going to say a little bit about that, and I'm going to raise it on Monday, so you've got a little bit more of an idea. I mean, the, the number one principle here, by the way, is 50% of every training session should be participation, right? Please never do half hour lectures. <laughs> um, um, yeah, all right. So this is my spiel about, and this is sort of how I might introduce it. And, and again, the whole idea of this is to get it wrong so that someone else can get it right. So I don't think this is the final thing. Um, all right, so it goes something like this. All right, so the fundamental point to communicate, I think, here is that strategy is not morality, right? So one of the big problems with trying to think about how to be successful is people start to think that if someone disagrees with them, then it's because they're a bad person. Now, often if someone disagrees with you, it can be because they're a bad person, i.e. the racist or something, or it can be because they simply don't agree with you, you know, on, on a, a strategic level, you see what I mean? So an interesting example here, I think, is, is all the black guys in North Carolina that voted for Biden, right? So you could be quite snotty about those guys and say they didn't vote for, um, who's the main man? Uh, Sanders, is that how you say it? Um, yeah, because you know they're liberals or they don't really understand the american power system or glum bum bum so you could be quite nasty to them or you could say hang on a minute you know that might be being quite disrespectful maybe the black guys in north carolina have actually got good reasons to be suspicious of all these radical lefty northeastern united states you know come down here tell us what to do routine types right so that as soon as you open up the idea that maybe they've got a different strategic orientation then you can have a civilized conversation if you see what i mean you don't have to be shouting that you're racist or you've got false consciousness or you're just liberals you can say well actually maybe you're wrong and these are the reasons in other words you give the reasons why okay so that's that's the turn that takes people from sort of immature social uprising con sort of thinking to mature social uprising thinking. So the hist in, in the 20th century, there was a respectable tradition of intelligent social uprising theory, if you see what I mean. So intellectuals would get together and they wouldn't shoot each other over disagreements. They'd say, actually, maybe you're wrong because of these reasons, all right? So what does the what do like the Paul Engler professionals of social uprising theory have to say? And it'd be good to center this within this, the ongoing, the recent stroke ongoing uprising, for want of a better word, in America at the moment. Okay, so what the Engler's hypothesis is, 
and you know you can translate this into normal speech when you're talking to you know your average American is that there is the big problem with what me and him sort of call social media fueled uprisings is that they go up really quickly and they're really dramatic and everyone gets emotionally charged and then they suddenly collapse back down right because there's no structure there's no aim there's no way of making collective decisions okay so what 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 um what Paul Engel is saying and what we're saying in the momentum theory is that's cool, you know, there's lots of plus points. What's happened in the last fortnight in America, you know, let's be sophisticated. It's got its pro, it's got its plus points, it's got its minus points, right? And the opposite of what you might call sort of uh, the whirlwind, as Paul Engler calls it, whirlwind events, you know, like uh, Egypt 2012, you know, check it out if you don't know about it. The opposite of that is what you might call solid American civil uh, community, community um, organizing tradition, you know, going back to 1930. So that tradition is saying, forget all that bollocks about, about you know, taking down the system. Basically, the, the lights along the street don't work. We have a community meeting. You start off and you go, let's get the lights working along the street. You know, go and have a demonstration about outside your local council. Solid, material, community-based. And you go bang, 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 one finger at a time, right? That not all this big, high-fluted, sort of university-educated sort of rubbish, right? We're the working class in Chicago, and we just want something slightly better, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the classic example of this is, of this is Rules for Radicals, Al Lewinsky, whatever it's called, you know, put him on your, your reading list, right? You know, gutsy, no messing about stuff. Okay, so what Paul Engel is saying is, that's cool, that's cool, but, like, no, you're not going to bring down the system doing that because it's too slow. So what momentum organizing is about is about the fusion of those two things right and it's hellishly difficult to do because that's why we're still in a mess right so don't give your hard time <laughs> but in so much as it's a good way a way of doing it this is what uh, xr america is about which is strategically syn synthesizing the whirlwind methodology or the mass mobile the mass movement methodology with the community organizing methodology, right? And this is fused arguably in what's called the civil resistance methodology, right? The civil resistance methodology, which you can read about in, in uh, Chenoweth, is these, these momentums, processes, usually go the, the only, yeah, that's her, sorry, never can pronounce anyone. Uh, she, um, she, her, 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 um, uh, her study comes up with the idea that these, mo these episodes last three to six months, okay? So they don't last like a month, like what's just happened in America, arguably, or what happened in Egypt in 2012. And they don't last like 20 years, like Chicago community organizing, right? In other words, this is what we're doing. We've got a period now between now and next April to mobilize 50,000 people. And what we're doing is we're doing several things which synthesize the two things and this is what you're selling to people basically in welcome to the rebellion so first of all you're selling a structure because without a structure then things collapse in other words you have for instance you have affinity groups the affinity groups support each other they know who they are they know where they live they know their buddies they can go to the hospital and pick them up you know da, da, da. there's like a pre-existing support structure and and they trained they're trained in non-violent discipline so when someone hits them they don't hit them back and they practiced it like they did in you know in the, in the civil rights movement in the 60s right if you haven't seen those films check them out like it was their role playing was quite full on <laughs> so um that's one thing okay then another thing is like organization so organization means like similar sort of idea but basically there's lots of groups and they have a voting structure they have internal and external coordinators and they have a regional structure and they have a way of making decisions and they have a way of asking crap people to leave and they have a way of mobilizing in their communities blah 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 right and then the third thing which is possibly like the icing on the cake 
is they have demands and they have a way of negotiating those demands and they have a way of deciding when to get off the street, if you see what I mean. So a classic example of how it goes wrong is the French uprising in 2018, like went on for three months, right? And I'm not exaggerating here. There were approximately 100 different groups claiming to speak for the French uprising. So what was the consequence of that? They all got picked off by the French state, right? By, the, by April, there was only like two or 3,000 people mobilizing because they structurally couldn't decide how to decide. You see what I mean? Because it just started one weekend with some, you know, 60 year old women in regional France going, fuck that, I'm just gonna block the road. <laughs> you know, when they were told that there was gonna be a eco tax on their diesel, all right? So, so you can sort of see, see what's happening in America. Maybe you've got a better idea of what, where it is along that continuum. My feeling is it's about 20, 80% social media fueled mobilization, 20%, you know, sort of momentum organizing. So what you need to make it is 80% momentum organizing and 20% social media fueled mobilizing, if you see what I mean. So you're always going to have, but there's nothing, there's nothing like, there's nothing super, there's nothing um, sort of clean about this, right? This is real life stuff. You're always going to have people throwing stones, right? <laughs> but you, the thing is, you've got 80% of people that basically know what the deal is. Um, so, for instance, that's, you know, in the Children's March, if you, if you watch that video several times, you realise how chaotic it was. You still had people throwing stuff at tanks in the street, right? But most of the guys were doing the main routine. So that's like your the sales pitch here then is, is that's what we're doing here, right? What we're doing is fusing those two traditions because every successful uh, uprising is momentum driven, right? There's been no successful social media fueled uprising since 2000, right? All the orange, all the red orange uprisings you know in ukraine in lebanon they've all got nowhere egypt they've all got nowhere why because they didn't organize in a classical way you know in the sense that they did say in um the last sort of classical uprising was 1997 with uh i think 1997 1996 with serbia so serbia used the gene shot methodology right highly organized highly disciplined if you wanted to be part of the uprising you had to go to a weekend course right welcome to the rebellion that where everyone's told to maintain non-violent discipline so you can check out blueprint for revolution to work out how that works so that lineage goes back to martin luther king to gandhi to gene sharp to the sort of classical 20th century hierarchy organized sort of uprisings since 2000 has been the sort of horizontalist dogma uprisings and they've not succeeded hence the reassessment if you see what i mean so it's important to know where you are in that trajectory um okay so there we are we've only got 20 minutes left so we'll definitely do two sessions on this <laughs> so what i want jamie to do is to summarize what i've said add a few personal bits and uh and don't worry about getting it right and and then we've got two sort of bites of the cherry but this is the sort of introduction to your welcome to rebellion session so jamie for three or four minutes just say whatever comes in bed or whatever you've got thank you roger all right so from what i was hearing you say is that you mentioned story strategy and structure you mentioned discipline and momentum, that 80% of the movement has to be momentum while 20% of the organizing is done through social media. You've um, mentioned that we look at the other current and recent past uprisings and that um, we need to be organized, disciplined, and structured and we need a plan is that something is that about right yeah anything you want to add uh, i completely agree with you i think that personally trying to put that together right now with so many different people and so many different people's input 
coming from a place where there is no hierarchy? Um, how do we make decisions fast enough for us to make a real impact without it taking a month or two to decide on just doing a simple action? Um, and I wonder about as far as our regenerative culture, are we as, um, are we capable of it really? Like, are we capable of being able to really work together? Um, not that I doubt it, uh, but I, it is a, it is a question that I've, I've yet to see really um, take place to the extent I think it needs to take place, but I'm hopeful that it, that we can do this. So that's my personal thoughts. Great. Well, that's going to have, that's going to be your standard response, isn't it? When you're sitting, when you get up and some, that's always going to be the main response. So it's a really good question. So how do you respond to that? You know, how do you, uh, so if you read um, Blueprint for Revolution, they have a big joke about this, which is it couldn't happen here. Did I tell you this joke? It's not really a joke, but it's sort of amusing. So basically in the Serbian revolution, you know, but I don't, when you read this, you'll laugh because they were basically all pop stars types. You know, they didn't know a thing about like political theory or organizing. They were just playing guitars and then decided to have a rebellion. So the, um, to not get the idea, they were particularly like sus. <laughs> they just got hold of Gene Sharp and started reading it and then off they went. But what, because their rebellion was so, their revolution was so successful, um, basically they set up a consultancy and they went around the world showing people how to do things and there's a direct lineage between them and the uh, uh, Egyptian revolution for instance and they said um, and they had this joke which is it couldn't happen here so it generally go, they go to Lebanon or somewhere and they say oh well you know you Serbians you know because of this they're trying to do all this intellectual clever thing you know your social structures like this your cultures like that if you come to Lebanon you've got to understand we've got the Shiites we've got the you know we've got the you just couldn't happen here mate and then you know and then of course it, it does and then it goes to sort of you know egypt and say well you know we've got the cops and you know we've got you know we've got the pyramids or something <laughs> whatever it is yeah you know, it couldn't happen here and of course you get this all the time in america you know oh roger you know you don't you, you you know, when I talk to the USXR people, they're saying, Roger, you know, it's a great idea, but you couldn't happen here. You know, you've got everything's got to rotate around X, Y and Z. And I was going, yeah, 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 whatever. But like, so, so the point, the point is, is culture Trump structure, right? This is a big thing in social movement theory is over the last 20 years, they finally sussed out that structure is pretty irrelevant. The, the, the agency is what we're doing in this room now. That's what Chenua says, which is the, the agency is activist organization. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is or how good it is. You know, I mean, preferably it needs to be quite bad if there is anything. So you can check out like uh, Larry Kramer on this, you know, uh, just reading the biography, 400 pages on ACT UP. <laughs> and basically the main thesis is that it was so bad in the 80s that that's why they succeeded, right? Everyone hated gay people. That's why. So it actually triggered it, uh, if you see what I mean. So in other words, and this is a good argument for Trump, of course, it's a bit of a slightly tricky argument, but the argument is Trump is so bad that it triggers an uprising and uprising brings about the social change. You know, if it's just some run-of-the-mill Republican, then people wouldn't be so mad. I mean, you know, it's a tricky argument, right? Because, you know, you don't want to be going, well, Trump's great, but this is like difference between morality and analysis if you see what I mean all right so gee I'm really bad on your name so I'm just going to ask you it's Guido with a hard G Guido, that's so bad I'm never going to get that Guido so Guido. Guido it's Italian yeah it's like a Domio right I keep calling her I I still can't get her name but she's a Buddhist so I, I'm I'm all right I'm safe but, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you reply to Jamie. So Jamie's say or someone's saying, okay, Guido, you're like, you know, that's great, but you know, this isn't gonna happen in America. You're like Americans just can't organize. They're just all over the place. You know, this is the land of the free and the brave, and people don't wanna they just wanna do their own thing. They wanna go to you know, what's that supermarket called? You have Walmart, right? And watch Netflix. People just can't get their act together in this country. You're just wasting your time, mate. What do you say? Uh, 
Well, I mean, for me, for me, I've got my kids and I have to look them in the eye every day and I have to look at the, at the future that's coming down the track at them like a freight train, you know, because the world we're heading into is, is like hell on earth. Right. So I don't, I don't really have that, uh, personally, I don't have that, that choice anymore. Um, and you know, I guess a lot of people that are, that do have kids that have a similar, they, maybe they have, if they haven't opened their eyes, you know, they're kind of oblivious, but once you start to look at it, you can't ignore it. Um, and so for me, it's about uh, doing what I have to do right now. It doesn't matter so much whether, whether we succeed or not, you know, um, but I do, I do have faith that once people start to act, that they, that other people recognize it, right? And that the thing that we haven't had for, you know, the last 30 years on climate is people actually acting like it's an emergency and taking it seriously. So that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I want to do. And I'm looking for people that that resonates with, and let's do it together. Because I think like, if you look around what's happening in the country right now, there's changes going on that we haven't seen the speed of anything like, you know, for decades. I, I'm 40 years old and I've been watching the police brutality for, you know, all of my adult life, right? 20 years. And there are things that are snapping right now in people's minds. And I think a big part of it is they stopped, they stopped feeling like there was nothing they could do. And they got out in the streets and like, I just read this thing yesterday and I wish I could remember it verbatim, but it's like, Right now in New York City, the, the police are going seven days a week without breaks, right? And they're, they're starting to drop out like flies. Like this, the system that we think is so powerful, it's like, you know, this far from, from cracking. And if we had some organization behind it, we could keep going and really push it to the breaking point. So that's the, that's the kind of orientation I see around that. Totally fantastic. Give that man the Role Player of the Award Award. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally fantastic. So much better than my overly intellectual King's College bollocks, right? You know, keep it personal. Keep it like, this is what it is for me. I'm only talking for myself. This is what I say to my kids. This is what I see happening. And we're so close, right? So that's good, right? And just for the... You know, just to be through my little intellectual routine, the industry average is 10 days, right? 10 days is how long it takes for a full scale rebellion to get to scale, to get to the nonlinear point. I mean, have, have you guys noticed this? It was like for the first week, it was like, yeah, 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 fuckers get off the street. And then suddenly they start going, okay, okay, so let's um, defund the police a little bit they start bargaining right like that happens in every contestation around 10 days maybe a week maybe two weeks but no it happened in in october right you know in in after day 11 the police said if you go on the street you know in super liberal britain they said if you go on the street with two people you're breaking the law right they started getting really like macho about it and suddenly the liberal class was going we don't do that in Britain. And all the liberals came out and started going, I'm going to get, you know, the Green Party leader suddenly decided to get arrested. You know, he couldn't cope. And, but then it stopped, right? And then everyone thought it was a failure. So, you know, so the point, the name of the game is two weeks. Just keep at it. Keep going. And don't, and don't degenerate to marches like sort of is happening. So, um, I'm going to go to Zach. Are you okay with that? And I, so you introduce, yeah, you do your own, your own thing. And if you want to introduce a little bit of a theory following on from Guido. Um, okay. So like, so as we're seeing in the news, there is a lot of unrest and uh, a lot of problems in our society. And um, a lot of this is interconnected with each other. <clears throat> uh, what is like social issues, what is uh, environmental justice and politics, how humans interact with it is all also environmental issues. And while we are uh, 
seeing these this unrest for justice and change um it is starting to come to a tipping point and starting to get more and more of a issue of a problem you know this is something that we will see generations after generations uh our society is going to crumble really soon unless we do something about it so it is more important than ever to stand up for your rights to disobey authority to make proper lasting sustainable change and we are doing that right now through uh, our organization and uh, others that we are going to link together with and um, yeah, uh, it is now more important than ever to have our voices heard, to have these demands that our leaders aren't willing to hear or see or consider and have it be addressed not only for us, but for future generations to make a sustainable change. Great, okay, so that's good. Um, but let's assume they've got the story now, right? Okay. But they actually they want to know. Let's assume they actually want to know concretely what this means. So Nick, what I want you to do is to summarise what the specifics about this mobilisation that makes it different from a social media fueled mobilisation. So what is it about the structure? What is it about the organisation? What is it about the plan? Um, what is it about the aims and the you know Washington. So just give a three or four minute summary of what this moment, what it, what momentum organizing means in this context. So momentum organizing is um, this context is we intend to organize within communities, create affinity groups uh, where people have each other's back, they look after each other. They organize, uh, mobilize, and take action with each other and attend these nonviolent direct action trainings in which they are disciplined in nonviolent uh, nonviolence. And so, so the civil, civil resistance model is what we are modeling uh, in Extinction Rebellion America. Um, and our aims is to occupy the streets of uh, Washington, D.C., the center of power. Uh, with thousands of people, 50,000 arrestables, uh, through sustained occupation. Um, and so we intend to break the law in order for the government to concede to our uh, clear demands um, our, for radical political change. Um, and so we are, we're gonna be organized, right? We're gonna have a structure. We're gonna have inter internal and external coordinators. and we're going to mobilize communities all over this country um mobilizing towards that goal and so um yeah i guess that's, that's about yeah it. yeah great great so that's good so you so you starting to you're starting to actually say something real here right because people have been to meetings and people have been to lots of meetings where people will do that whole routine of going, yeah, things are bad, things have to change, we have to go to the streets, like, yeah, 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 right? But what you're starting to say is, okay, there's some specific ideas here. And this is when people start getting, ex I mean, they need to have that initial thing, right? But people start to get ex excited a bit like, you know, I expect you did when you read it, you say, Oh, you know, what's this? Oh my God, right? This is quite organized, right? You know, these people have a plan. You know, this isn't just some waffle, you know, blah, 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 college sort of, you know, do more bumping. It's like, no, 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 these people have got, I mean, maybe it doesn't work, but it's a plan, right? So Daniel, I want you to do it again, but introduce some of the elements that you think are quite impressive. Maybe they've impressed you, you know, about the story, so think about it in this way, the story. So what's the story here? Um, what's, the, what's the strategy and what's the structure? So think about it like that. Don't worry if you don't get it all in, right? Just some, a few bits and pieces um, and then we'll see how that works. Sure, yeah. 
I mean, the way I look at it is that the, the facade is starting to crumble. A lot of people who had faith in the sort of liberal progressive system that we can make small incremental changes to create a society that takes care of everybody, that is becoming obviously false. And I think the message that we have from Extinction Rebellion and climate, the climate world to the rest of the greater movement is, uh, you're right, we're out of time. We don't have time to uh, repair our society. We're in a revolutionary moment right now. So um, that's what Extinction Rebellion is sort of riding on, riding on that wave of, um, we really have to address the whole system. And we recognize that the only way we're gonna do this in time and effectively is through mass civil disobedience and essentially um, taking down the regime that's, that's responsible for uh, our path to destruction. And the important thing to recognize is that movements of the past have failed because they don't have adequate structure. You know, we're trying to get as many people into the streets of Washington, D.C. as possible. But if we take down the regime and there's not a plan to follow it up and there's not sufficient structure within our organizing, then it's going to be really easy to undermine the movement or even replace it with something worse. So that's why it's really important we have structure. Um, we have a decentralized system, um, which avoids a lot of the problems of the past in revolutionary systems of hierarchy, um, the revolution going bad. So the structure really addresses um, how we have to do this revolution as safely and responsibly and in response to what we know from uh, the social science of revolutions. So uh, we have coordinators, we have different affinity groups that have pre-existing relationships. And basically we're building as much like trust and relationship and um, different groups and circles into the system as possible. So it's as resilient as possible. And um, just, that's a little bit about the structure as far as strategy goes. Um, basically we recognize that mass civil disobedience is the only thing that can get us out of this mess in time right now. I guess right. I'll leave it at that. Okay, yeah, let's leave it at that. That's good. So you said, you start, so start thinking about these three things that are talking momentum, okay? When you're structuring your little pep talk at the beginning, as it were, you're, you're, you know, you're doing what Greedo did, which was the personal thing at the beginning, which is really great. And then you're starting to develop what um, Zach and Nick and uh, Daniel have just been doing, which is you're starting to do a summary. So what I would sort of orientate ourselves here is you saw of setting the scene at the beginning of the welcome to rebellion and then you know you're going to have breakout groups where you can discuss it and then people come back and then you're going to do a good 15 minutes on each one do you see what i mean and then you can go away and actually plan that talk that 15 minute talk where you go okay this is the story and you've got your 20 points you've got to go through you see what i mean uh this is the strategy okay 20 points this is the structure um so for in, so you're started off with the story and you're going, we're out of time, we need systemic change. Then you're going on to the strategy, the whole system needs to change through mass civil disobedience. There's no time to do anything else. The structure is, is not a hierarchical, it's decentralized. It's aimed to be safe with the finished groups, let's say, uh, and, um, and such like. Okay, so there's a few other bits and pieces that we can probably add to that. So we, I'll, we'll go for another five minutes because I want to include um, every, everyone actually. So I'm going to do some, maybe something fairly quickly with JLo, Parker and, and Jolly. Um, so do it again, JLo, but just a story, strategy, structure, and just throw in a few new sort of bits which you think are useful. By JLo, do you mean LJ? Yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> JLo's that other dude. I, I just, I just put that in. I was looking to, around, to, like, where's JLo? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> J, LJ. Oh my God, that's like the opposite way around. That is, that's the end of me. I'm going to retire. Anyway, <gasps> right. 
<laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, well, thanks everyone for being here. Um, yeah, I mean, you've seen the Heading for Extinction talk by now. You might have been to a chapter formation meeting. You know, you're still here because you believe that things aren't right. Uh, and they aren't right. You can look at the protests going on right now. Um, everyone, at, at some capacity, we know that this is, you know, this is not the country that we were, uh, that we grew up in as far as like we thought that, you know, we were perfect or I don't know. It's just a weird time. But, you know, I want to focus on, sorry, I, when you said JLo, I was just not expecting for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to start over a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, story, story, strategy and structure. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So time's up everyone. Um, if you've seen the Heading for Extinction talk, you know, we only have a few years maybe to, to turn the ship around and we need as many people as possible. The situation doesn't get more dire than this. We've never faced um, anything like this in, in human history, really. Um, the only way we can do this is through mass nonviolent civil disobedience. Uh, I mean, because of how short, um, you know, how just, I mean, we're already suffering. It's, that's why I'm saying like, we don't have that much more time to lose um, or else this suffering is going to affect pretty much everyone except for the top 1%. Um, and we really don't want that to happen. So our strategy, you know, really focuses on that non-violent part of the mass civil disobedience. We, we have to train people, we have to teach everyone to, you know, even when you're being oppressed to not react in an aggressive way. And I understand that, I mean, if you've, if you've struggled with that for years, you, you want to react, you know, you have every right to, uh, to be angry at, at the regime that's in control and that's been in control for generations, but we really can't afford any sort of violent reaction like that. Um, and that's a core to our strategy. And then along with that, you know, structure is equally important. We cannot um, fall victim to these, you know, a lot of these social media driven movements that have been going on for the past 20 years because they, at the end of the day, you know, there's, we need a democratic structure um, with these movements. We need pre-existing groups and it might sound impossible with the short amount of time that we have but if you look around we already have i mean thousands of towns and community councils and groups that are already you know that already exist that as long as you just give them the truth and you give them the message you know that structure is already there uh so it's it's not as you know as outrageous as you think um but it's it's so unbelievably important because we cannot risk um, any sort of any sort of time loss. I guess uh, so. I guess that I want to wrap this up before we do breakout groups um, by saying that um, even if you think the situation isn't bad, I <laughs> you, I promise you it is. There's there's got to be something in your life where you know you've had that moment of like this is unfair. I shouldn't be treated this way, and um, climate change is just is just another another facet of that uh, of that beast that's been raging war on us for for so long. Um, so let's do something about it. Yeah, that's great. it. Great, 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 great. Okay. So you, you're getting you're all getting a little bit you're getting your spiels worked out, aren't you? <laughs> You're just going to be saying this while you're thinking about what you're going to eat for dinner in the, in the three months' time, right? You just, you know, uh, it's going to be it's it's going to be great. So let's like move on to Parker. So again, you know, just write those things, three things down. What's the story? What's the strategy? What's the structure? And just say whatever comes out of your mouth and go for it. Yeah, Parker. Yep. Um. So. I marched this week with um, the BLM protesters pretty much all week. And um, 
there's a lot of chants that have been in my mind, right? It's a learning moment for me, but um, one of them, no justice, no peace. Another one, what, what do we want? Justice, when do we want it? Now, what if we don't get it? Shut it down. There's an 8 p.m. curfew in Phoenix. Every day this week, the protesters started dissipating at about 7.30 p.m. No justice, no peace, and shut it down don't mean anything if you don't actually follow through on them. If you don't actually disobey what these authoritarians are telling you to do, then those, those chants and those marches don't mean anything. Phoenix uh, City Council voted on the police department budget this week. Well, they've uh, extended their voting into next week because it's been highly contentious, but as of right now, the Phoenix PD budget is 57% of the city, one of the highest in the country. Phoenix PD kills uh, the highest rate, one of the highest rates in the country. It uses force more than any other major police department in the United States of America, more than uh, NYPD for a city of maybe one fifth the size. We don't have time. There's only one way at this point from the municipal all the way up to the federal level in the United States of America and across the world, there's only one way for you to actually get something done. And it's by disobeying. What they tell you to do, you must disobey it. Peacefully, nonviolently, of course. But you have to say no. You have to draw a line in the sand. Because ultimately, yeah, it is more than NYPD. Yeah, yeah, more more use of more use of force. So more more shootings and more um, uses of things like tear gas and batons and whatnot. Um, just read the statistics. There was an investigation last year um, by the local paper. So it's it's this is what Extinction Rebellion is about. The stakes are incredibly high, and the people that you have to draw a line in the sand against are incredibly, or the, the institutions rather, are incredibly murderous. I mean, Chevron was telling people in Ecuador that the oil they were dumping in, the, in these indigenous lands was going to have healing powers. I mean, they will flagrantly kill you. These institutions, corporations, these governments, they, they will kill you. And they're, they're going, to, we're maybe not here in the States yet, maybe we haven't hit that level of opposition, but it will eventually happen. And their reaction is modeled by the reaction we see for some of these issues, these more provincial issues, very important, but provincial issues that we're seeing right now. And I think Black, this moment with Black Lives Matter is incredibly instructive that they will send the police chief to the front of the march to lead the marchers, say all the chants, and you have this absurd thing where the police chief is chanting, no justice, no peace, shut it down, and the marchers are chanting, and everyone leaves at 7:30, and it's unlikely that the police budget is even going to get cut. I mean, this is this is how cynical it can get, and we don't have time for that. When it comes to climate, that literally means death or genocide or war. So that's that's what we're up against, right? <clears throat> Extinction Rebellion civil disobedience model says that the only way to really force action against these people and these institutions is to, to the furthest degree that we possibly can is to disobey them and to, sh and to literally shut them down, not just to chant, but, but in practice, shut down centers of power, shut down cities, shut down streets, shut down bridges, shut down transportation networks, shut down everything. Um, and I don't know, if, you, if this moment doesn't make it clear to you how authorities react, if you don't shut things down, if you just ask politely, or if you cooperate with them, uh, or if you let them co-opt whatever you're do doing, then I don't know that you're paying attention. So <clears throat> um, I forget the third part, st the strategy, story strategy, structure. Yeah, that's great, Roger? Parker. That's great. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. That's great. Really great. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to come in and it's quite, you know, you're just putting your finger on, on the button. That's exactly what we want to do. Um, See, you know, I mean, how I'm feeling is this particular time, you know, you, you can sort of feel how it basically is. It's 
it gives a seriousness to what this project is about, if you see what I mean, because everyone's thinking about it. And you can sort of feel how that can actually aid the mobilization. You know, you see what I mean, uh, in, a, in a funny sort of way. So let's finish off with Jolly. Um, and then we'll have a, a go around and we'll carry on next week. So Jolly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you've got, yeah. Sorry? I said gladly, but would you mind throwing the prompt at me one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever comes into you, don't worry about how it comes out. But basically, something about the story. What's the story here? What's your story? What's the strategy? What's the plan? Um, and what's the structure? How is it going to be organized? Well, you know, this isn't the first time people are, are learning about what civil disobedience can do. Uh, in our lifetime, in this past week, we've seen what's happened in LA. Uh, with just one week worth of civil disobedience, people going out there, putting themselves on the line uh, about something that doesn't directly affect them. You know, a lot of white people out there are protesting, knowing that the benefits are never going to directly impact them. But just a week worth of being disobedient. We've gotten 100 to $150 million out of the budget that goes to LAPD. I mean, think about what's going to happen when we've been out here for two weeks. That's, that's the power of, of civil disobedience. Uh, and, you know, that we are wearing down the powers that be. And I think that that's something that's really important with the way that XR is structured because it is so decentralized and because you can have people swapping in and coming in as they're able because we have a regenerative culture we can outlast any authoritarian uh jack food government what was the last point story structure i forgot the last one strategy strategy you know that's why that's why are going to gather enough momentum and we're going to have enough people to talk to other people that they already know and that they care about and say hey here's something that we can't ignore because it's going to affect you and it's going to affect everyone who uh, is descended from you and it's going to affect every other human being in the world as well and right. we've got by april to make something happen Great. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> You've got me. So, Sign Roger, up. do you want to hold this sign? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me what to do, mate. Just tell you, I'm all yours. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm excited. That's good. That's good. You guys are good. So, um, so two little things before we finish, just have a quick go around. This should be in my other meeting, but I think it's really interesting. So two little things. One of the things that just leaps out with me is this thing about the police. I think someone said the police basically are knackered, right? So as professional social revolutionaries, that's your key metric, right? Is when the police get knackered is when stops change starts happening like in the october rebellion in the uk like oh knackered yeah what's knackered yeah sorry translation so uh, exhausted uh yeah 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 um so in the october um you know 1800 arrests in 10 days like the police were saying they were arresting people and they're having a conversation in the front, front seat and they were going we've just done like four 12 hour shifts we're so fucked up shall we just drive around the corner and let these guys out so we don't have to process them at the police station right they were having conscious conversations about that just just over it right you know dragging grannies into police vans like four days in a row so the same crop things sort of happening in new york and very so it's interesting it'd be interesting to try and capture either stats or or antidote, some some sort of stories around that. Do you know what I mean? Because stories and stats are quite powerful, you know, to actually show this is how, how it works. Um, and the other thing I'd say is, is you're in your little teams, aren't you? So what what you know what you can do, and this might sound a bit weird, but I think it's really good, is 
get into pairs and do it like four times, right? Just keep doing it. So you've got four minutes each. And what, once you've done this about three times, you start sounding pretty sexy. You know, you start sounding bang, 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 right? You know, like the first time you're a bit like, uh, and there's that. And um, yeah, strategy, so does that. But by the time you get to your fourth time, you go, you know, you start sounding like Martin Luther King, which is where you want to be, right? You know, it's just like, you know, you know, these people did like three speeches a week for 20 years, right? They could just turn up and spiel it out. So, and also you start, get, if you do that, you start getting in touch with your emotions a bit more, which is what it's all about. You know, you actually start, you know, start thinking, we did this thing, I don't know if I told you about this, but we did this thing where we, we were like 12 people in a room and everyone said to the other person, the only question you ever get asked by the media, which is, why are you disturbing people, right? There's only one question, isn't there? You know, why are you stopping people from getting, why are you closing, you know, da -da -ba -ba. and the first go round, so we only had one question and on the first go round, people were just doing that, you know, political superficial thing well it's because we're concerned about climate change you know and it's not going very well it's like yeah 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 and then like the second time we went around people were going well because i'm really pissed off you know and, and blah, 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 blah. by the third time it goes around people are starting to say i'm really worried about my sister i'm really worried about what's going to happen and people were in tears and it was like poof you know, it's because you it's a bit like therapy, you start scraping off the different layers till you get to something that's really like powerful. So that's an interesting sort of little thing to do, you know, which you can do in pairs just to give partially to give yourself a bit more confidence, but also to get down to what's really going on in your hearts about this, if you see what I mean. Because we've all got that going on, haven't we? Deep down. And that's what's gonna, you know. I mean, obviously it's good in itself and all that, but the fact of the matter is that's basically what empowers other people as well. So you can do that. And then next week, then we'll, um, we'll, um, we'll try and focus on the job as it were <laughs> and, uh, and, and focus a bit uh, on those three sections, if that's all right with you, Tatiana. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got, got it right there. Um, which is, so maybe you should check out in the next week is your homework if that doesn't sound too tricky uh have a look at the documentation i'll ask the core team guys on monday what's going on with that but the basically we need to have 15 minutes feel on the story on the strategy on the understructure and also we need to be thinking about what exercises they do in order to sort of you know sort of uh, incorporate that as you might say um ron you're just talking all the time Okay, so um, shall we just have a quick go around? Um, yeah, so do you want to start, Guido? You got it, perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited for uh, this evening. Going to talk to some folks and, um, you know, get, uh, get them in the room together. And hopefully we get the first chapter going here in Miami. Uh, Tatiana? Yeah, I'm really excited to put this all together and um, hopefully, I don't know if my team is down for it, like, can we practice what he was talking about after the call? Because, yeah, that'd be amazing. And yeah, learn a lot. Thank you. Um, who's next? Um, I'm going to be dictatorial. I'll just go through. Jamie? Hi, I'm totally excited. I just want to say I did get the book, Roger. Oh my god. I'm really excited to start reading. Top of the class. Put her to the top of the class now. She's got the book. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, you can go ahead and hand it over, Roger. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Daniel. Yeah, I just feel really impressed by all the other mobilizers. Really uh, glad to be part of this team and uh, really glad for your instruction and time, Roger. Thank you. Check. Uh, Donald. Um, yeah, I'm excited uh, to use what we've learned here. Uh, we've got some good stuff uh, from this session and uh, excited to keep it moving. Great. Um, thanks. Uh, Nick? Yeah, thank you, Roger. Um, 
so looking forward to that welcome call that Guido and I are going to be doing to form the Miami chapter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, Zach? Yeah, it was great. Um, the good stuff about like framing and uh, even just more articulating our message. So that's always really helpful and I always love learning that. So thank you. And Jolly. Hey, thanks again, Roger. Really excited to have uh, your leadership like this on, on the calls. I know that we've got so much to learn for you. Thanks, but I've got so much to learn from you. Uh, it's it's really powerful. It's really exciting. Uh, the revolution will not be centralized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Parker. Yeah, thanks, Roger. Um, thanks for this talk. And also thanks for linking me. Your friend Jamie also sent me an email. So I, he sent me a long thing about um, what we're talking about. So I'm happy to get linked up with him too. Um, Tatiana and Guido and Nick, do you guys, if you guys all have the time, do you mind staying for just like a few minutes? Because I was curious to ask um, what you guys are up to for practicing. Um, <clears throat> and the, to the rest of you, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, everyone had great, um, great things to say. So. We might have to jump on another. Oh, Tatiana, you're hosting, so you can just hold the call, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, and um, see you same time next week. Oh, well, see you in a week. Yeah. Great. All yeah, right. Okay. Take care. Wednesday, right? Well, we'll Wednesday. See yeah. 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 Wednesday. Yeah. With the great Dolly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.